Well, I am just quickly slapping on some makeup because we are going to go find some more Christmas ornaments. <laughs> I actually late last night, well, I guess early this morning, 3 a.m., found somewhere nearby that looked like they had a bunch in stock. They looked like they were going to be a good price. So my mom is still here with us today, which is awesome. And she said she would love to come with us to go shopping for ornaments. So that's great. Jax is excited about going. And we were looking at the different trees this morning to figure out, you know, kind of what kind of colors we would like. And all of a sudden we heard this beeping noise and it was like beep, 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 beep. And I had no idea what it was. I was trying to place the alarm in my mind. Like, which alarm is this? Anyway, all of a sudden, Jax ran out of the room and he goes, oh, it's me. And he ran into the kitchen. He had left the freezer door open and our refrigerator alarms if the door is left open too long. So we have some frozen orange juice in the freezer that I use for cooking. If I want an orange flavor, I just use the concentrated frozen stuff. And he likes to go in the freezer and get a little spoon and get some of it. So anyway, it was so funny. Because my mom and I were like, what is happening? We had no idea what, what was going on. Thankfully, he did. Yesterday, I forgot to tell you, but we, um, so, you know, we were decorating the tree and I knew that we were all going to get hungry. We were busy, so we weren't going to actually cook something. So I ordered pizza. Well, then 30 minutes later, I asked my husband to check on it because now by this point, we're all hungry. I asked my husband to check on it and he said that it had been canceled. So we called and it turned out they had, they didn't have a delivery driver. So we ended up having to go pick it up. We had to reorder it. And for some reason, it directed us to one that was twice as far away as I think we needed to go. So we all pile in the car, we're hungry. <laughs> we were expecting food a lot sooner. And then, you know, we, luckily we made a good drive of it. We found lots of construction equipment for my son to enjoy. But then when we got there, my mom went in to pick up the pizzas and she came out probably five minutes later. She said, oh man, that guy was on his phone complaining to somebody about how they didn't have a driver. And I was like, can I just walk around and get the pizzas? And he goes, no, no, just wait a minute. And so my mom started walking around to the other side of the counter and he finally put the phone down to help her. And when she came back in, we were joking. She was like, look, I've got a pregnant woman in the car. If I don't come out with food, I'm going to be a dead woman. <laughs> it was so funny. It's like, I had to feed her pizza. Or I'm a goner. I said, yep, that's right. I'm glad. I'm glad you are who you are and you got us some pizza. But we had a really good time. We were laughing about it and eating all the pizza in the car on the way home. <laughs>
Look at all these toppers. I am becoming, like I just had that one, that's why it's wiggling. <laughs> it's kind of like so many choices that I don't, I'm kind of overwhelmed with choices right now. <laughs> it's amazing. This store has everything. Look, I could even put a hat on the top of my tree or a crown. There you go. Be careful. I can be careful. Wait, wait, wait. You already opened some, honey. We need to hang those that you already opened. And then we can put these ones on. Okay, Pussy? Okay, but let's do these other ones first. Okay, I bought another jump from... Oh. And I just wanted to put it in the rock home rock treasure. special crane to have a whistle. Cranes have whistles. They all have whistles? Oh, they are really loud, really loud, really loud whistles. That's right their neighborhood on. Oh, they do? Are they as loud as your whistle? They are really too loud. Oh, they are? Yes, I like it when a tree has lots of ornaments. Lord, Lord. Really it looks like the tree has lots of ornaments. <laughs> yes. I think it could use more. Hi friends, it is the evening and we had a wonderful day. We just got back from our walk. We went through the neighborhood and a lot of people have their lights up already, which is always nice to see. My son was most excited about the Thomas the Train blow up decoration that one of the houses have has in their has in their lawn. So we I kept telling him when we drove by it on the way out of the neighborhood the past couple of days, I said, okay, we're going to have to go out on a walk at night and see if it lights up and we'll go with daddy. So tonight we did that. Just as we were stepping out the door, it started to rain. So <laughs> I wasn't expecting rain at all, but it, yeah. Not that I looked, but just still, I wasn't expecting it. So we came back in, grabbed our umbrellas. Um, my husband ended up putting our son in the carrier. He's got one of those hiking carriers. And then we went through the neighborhoods. It was really nice. It's always nice to go on a family walk. 
So what I have left for tonight, I'm trying to, you can see I'm in my sewing room. This is the first time today <laughs> I've been in the sewing room. But um, I've got my advent calendar from Beyond the Pink Door to open. I have realized that most of the people who have this advent calendar are in a different time zone and post their videos before I do. So I don't really have to worry about being like a spoiler, you know? <laughs> so I think tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and open it in the morning, which is when I want to open it anyway. I have that to do for the uh, for this video, and I also want to show you my new loungewear set that I made. They are from, two, it's from two patterns from Pattern Emporium, yes, that I love. So I want to show you that. And yeah, so let's get started with, and, and then I'll just share a few other things that I think will be coming up in these Vlogmas videos in the future. All right, so first I have day three here. Oh my gosh, how cute are these? Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, I'm thinking this is bias binding. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And the thing is, okay, I have a sewing confession. I, bias binding is one of those things for me. I mean, I'm still a newish sewer. Gosh, it's so cute. But it's still one of those things that when I hear somebody say that a pattern requires you to make a lot of bias binding, I think, mm, let's not. <laughs> well, first my concern is, doesn't it use up a lot of fabric? And then it seems kind of finicky because I have done it a few times, but it's always kind of finicky and you know you get it the wrong way and it messes up and, or I did it for something and I ended up with just sewing every five inches, sewing the strips together. And it just seemed ridiculous. Then I tried buying the bias binding at Joann's, which I realize now is not for garments. I just keep looking at it, it's so pretty. If you see me looking down, I'm just looking at how pretty it is. Anyway, I realize that is uh, actually better for like quilt binding or crafty things and not a beautiful garment. Now I know. And so I thought, oh, I really could use some good quality bias tape. Um, and now I have some. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, at the Beyond the Pink Door, Andrea Karras and Caroline for putting these together. I love them. All right, I'm going to put those. I have a special box for it. So I will put that there. All right, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, I will, let's talk about now my new loungewear pattern. Okay, not pattern. Dude, it's late. My new loungewear set. This set was created from two of the pieces of fabric that I showed in my recent Joann's fabric haul of comfy clo clothing fabrics. I'm serious, I cannot talk. <laughs> You're just gonna have to like, bear with me here <laughs> anyway um okay so what i made is and i've got a video but i made the first thing i'm going to show you is the top well let me tell you my goals first because i really have been thinking very intentionally about everything i make the past especially since november i decided you know, this year I feel like I've had kind of knee-jerk reactions like, oh, I I have this pattern or I need a tank top or I need a shorts. Let me just get the pattern, grab some fabric, do it. And I've realized as I've been reflecting on the year and the things I've sewn that there are certain things that if I just thought a little bit more about it, I might have made different choices. And I'll share those in later vlogs vlogmas videos but I really wanted to slow down and take some time 
to plan out what I was going to make. And not in a, in a big way, but to really think through what I wanted. So when I was, when I knew I needed some more pajamas that were really comfortable, you know, I've said in previous videos, I'm at this point now where um, at night, I just want to feel like nothing's touching my body because it's, my skin is sensitive and um, yeah. So I started a list of, okay, what do I want? How do I want to feel in these makes? Let, and let's be practical about it because my normal tendency when I'm not pregnant would be to make things that are form fitting, but that won't work if I want something that also feels like it's not touching my body. At the same time, I wanted something that didn't make me feel like I was just wearing a sack. There had to be some element about it that was a little flirty or a little cute, something that made me feel like this isn't just a big baggy top that I'm wearing because my husband has one of those that still can fit over me and I could just wear that, but I didn't feel pretty in it. So that was another thing. And then I also wanted something that I could wear after I have my baby and when we're, you know, I'm breastfeeding, I started thinking through that and what was most comfortable for me. I went through pictures of when I was like how I dressed when I was breastfeeding my son at the beginning when we were still at home. And I noticed that I needed a tank top and then some sort of easy topper because the tank top, I have like these really stretchy, I actually have one on right now. This I got from Target and it's so great because it's a scoop neck I'm just going to strip for you. It's a scoop neck. And what I used to do is when Jack's, when my son was first born, he would not sleep in the bassinet. So there were times when we would, like he would nap in my top. I would just pull it down. He was small and, and the fabric would hold him in and I would be sitting there in the bed. And it was just great for that. And then it's stretchy enough where when it was time to breastfeed, if I was at home and I didn't have to wear, you know, my bras and stuff, I would just pull it down and it would pop right back up. The recovery was good in the fabric. But the other thing I remembered is that I would have with the hormone changes, you know, as soon as you have that, um, what's it called? Like down... When your milk comes in, you know, it's time to feed your baby and your milk just rushes in. I can't remember what it's called, down something. My hormones would shift and all of a sudden I would be extremely thirsty, extremely hot, like ripping off layers, but it's also winter. So I needed something I could easily do that with or keep part of myself covered. You know, so these are all things that I was thinking through before I made this set. And I feel like what I got, oh, and I wanted something that I could potentially, theoretically, <laughs> easily alter when I didn't need so much fabric around my stomach. So after I give birth, I'm not going to need something so voluminous and I wanted something that would be really easy to alter. These are all the things I thought of, okay? <laughs> which I, it really worked out well because I feel proud of what I decided to do. So the first consideration was the top. And I chose the Pattern Emporium Game On One Shoulder Top. So here is, here are the line drawings. So it comes in all these different sleeve lengths. You can do fitted, banded, which is kind of blousey, or the flare version, which is what I chose. They also have, I chose the long sleeve flare, and you can also easily choose whether which shoulder you want out. 
So the neat thing about this top is that it's not just a wide neckline that you pull and then it has all this fabric here, or you could pull this way and there's extra fabric. It is sewn so that when you pop it over your head, it automatically goes where it's supposed to go. I really liked that. And there are so many cute versions of this. I love that Pattern Emporium, uh, Kate McCauley is the designer. She does these videos on how to wear each pattern and she shows you tons of different looks in different fabrics for dress up or dress down. And I mean, it's just so great to watch. I just love those videos. Anyway, so I was really inspired by this one. Normally, my normal self would go with the semi-fitted top, but realistic Melanie, now that I've gone through all my introspection, <laughs> that's why I made the flared top. It was a really quick and easy make. I like also that it has proper sleeves. I don't like dropped sleeves or like any form of drop sleeve, no. I just feel too bleh, slouchy in it. So anyway, that's what I did. Let me show you the video. And you can see I chose this. Um, it's a blue, white, and green kind of abstract design, double brush poly from Joann's for this top. I did a white double brush poly neck band. I debated whether to do cuffs, but for me, when I... I kind of just tested them out to see what it would look like. It made it a lot more casual than I wanted to go with this top. I wanted it to have the flexibility of possibly being a top I could wear outside <laughs> the house after my baby's born. So that's why I made the decisions that I made. Now it's very flared and I would normally not, this is just not the style I would do. But I did think that one option after giving birth would be to do a little half tuck and it would still have enough fabric for, you know, until I get all my stomach muscles back in place. And, you know, as I'm losing the extra pregnancy weight, that that would still give me some room to feel comfortable. I like that it had the one shoulder. So that was that flirty element that I was looking for, just something a little, it's simple, but it's just a little something cute. And also I think will go really well with wearing a little tank top underneath and it's easy to get on and off. So that will work for those hormone changes where I need, I suddenly need coverage or no coverage. It's super comfortable. Now, the weird thing is that I, so I've been sewing with double brush poly from Joann's, but the weird thing is that if we go somewhere to stay at an Airbnb, for example, and they have polyester sheets, like microfiber, I will not be able to sleep. Be and I won't even know at first what the problem is, but I, I can't sleep in it um, because the it's something about like, I can't ever get my temperature regulated and I don't know what it is, but it will be in the middle of the night. This happened even just a few months ago. It was like two or three in the morning and I was thinking, why in the world can I not get comfortable in this bed? And all of a sudden occurred to me that they must have polyester sheets. And sure enough, it was a hundred percent polyester like microfiber. And um, I had to switch up like put a cotton blanket down over those sheets in order to fall asleep. So there's that side of things that in general, I don't like wearing polyester. However, for some reason, this fabric doesn't make me hot. I don't sweat in it. I don't, um, like I don't ever feel clammy in it this particular brand. So I get their Galleria brand. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe they weave it differently. I don't know. So I felt comfortable 
making it as pajamas because for some reason I don't have an issue with theirs. Okay, so I think I showed you everything in the video. Okay, and then the other consideration was could I wear it and alter it easily? Now what I decided to do for this top was I sewed, I made the size 14, which uh, for the top and the sleeves, which fit my bust, my upper bust. And then from the arm side down, I graded to a size 18 in order to fit my hip and my bump and where I think all that's going. So right now my upper bust is 36, my bust is 41 and a half, my hip, which is like basically lower bump, is 45 and my waist is 43. So, and then I also measured the front length over the bump because I wanted to make sure it was long enough, obviously. And I measured the back length separately. And the great thing about these pattern emporium to, um, patterns is that she always includes any kind of measurement you are going to need to alter whatever you're going to alter. <laughs> One thing that I wish I'd done differently that I will do next time, I'm just reading my notes, is um, next time I think I'll do the right shoulder out. I did the left time this time, but um, I think that I'd be more comfortable with the right. And then I lengthened the sleeves one inch because I like, they ended on me, and I've had this in, I think I've had this happen in a couple of patterns, I'm, um, but I haven't made a lot of long sleeve tops, so I'm not totally sure. But it ended right there on me. And so if I, you know, reached out, it would come up a little bit. But for me, that's not where I like it. I like it a little bit more just onto my hand. I feel like it's more cozy. So uh, that's what I would do next time is lengthen it about an inch. And I already adjusted my pattern so it's ready for next time. So back to what I was saying is that I feel like because I did the flared version and because the top part is closer to, I mean, I imagine after birth, my breasts are still going to be larger. So I think that the top part will still fit pretty well. But as my body, my figure gets back to what my normal figure is, it will be super easy to just you know, take, do a smaller, um, take out some fabric along those two side seams. And then I could essentially end up with more of the semi-fitted top style. And I think I can do that a few times depending on, you know, how my weight is and everything, and it will still be nice and cozy. That's why I chose that pattern. I really like it. And I decided to also make another pair of the Urban Pants Collection. So I showed these in a previous uh, Friday Sews video. I made a pair in a um, blue fringe terry from Joann's and red fringe terry. And it's actually, well, I'll talk about the fabric in a minute. Uh, but this time I did it in this gorgeous it's kind of um deep teal double brush poly and i love it so much but it's kind of like deep teal that's more greeny the color is incredible i just love it so i decided to make i think the same as before i did the wide leg pants so this pattern one pattern comes with cropped tapered um and crop tapered <laughs> cropped flare, regular flare, and wide leg versions. You can do a high or low waist. There's also a maternity waistband. And are those pockets? Optional pockets, I didn't know that. I never put those in, so that's why I didn't know. Um, it's got just so many, you can do so many things with these pants. And 
they have really nice shaping too because it has four darts on the back. So let me just as a refresher, <laughs> this I'm actually wearing, I wear these all the time. So this is just a ready to wear shirt, but this is the pair that I made initially. I've got all kinds of lines going on here. Um, this is not the most flattering look for me, but these are my lounge pants. So I made this pair initially and all right, there's a little bit, you can see a bit more. Um, I really like the shaping on them. It's got the four darts in the back. Now, truthfully, these are a bit big. I could have gone smaller here. And then initially in the initial video, I had made, how many times can I say initial? I had made a the maternity waistband that went up over the bump, but I eventually decided that I was that was too uncomfortable um, for that whole idea of I don't want anything touching me. So hold on, my light just turned, and it's very precariously balanced one of the hinges broke. Oh, I'm scared to touch it. Oh, is it gonna? Okay, I think we can start there. Okay. Anyway, so I decided after the fact, after I'd worn them for about a week or so, to chop off that large waistband and put a yoga waistband in. So it goes under the bump, super comfortable, I did that with this blue pair, the red pair, and then with the new pair that I'm showing you, I went ahead and just made it that way with the underbump band. Um, I saw somebody say that they made their normal size in the pants, and then they just sized up for the yoga waistband, and that's how they ended up doing it as like a maternity band. I, for some reason, I take really good notes, but for some reason, I don't know. Oh, does it say on the pattern piece? I don't know what size I cut out. I, I don't know where it's, I didn't write it, I guess. And that's not like me, but I didn't write it. So what I ended up doing, uh, they have just as a quick recap, because I said this in my Friday sews, but um, this pattern lists the measurements for the length above your knee and below your knee so that you can make sure, especially if you do the flared pants. I wonder if these are flared and they're just large. I could probably size down. Um, but anyway, Blah, 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 I don't know what I was saying. So you can make sure that the knee part of the flare that comes in just a little bit is in the right spot. So I ended up, I added two inches of length above the knee. I took out one inch below the knee and I also took out one inch of the maternity waistband. I wanted it to come lower so I Decrease that an inch and then just grate, like use my French curve ruler, put that back. I love these pants. I wear them all the time. And today I wore my, um, you know, I had my green sweater on and my jeans, but after I was done with all my going to the store type activities, I came home and I changed immediately into these blue lounge pants. Yesterday I changed into the green double brush poly pants. I just, they are so comfortable. I wear them all the time. And like I said, it, I could size down, but I just worry because I still have 10 more weeks to go, 12 more weeks to go. I just worry that I'm going to need that space. Uh, so I'm not touching them for now. But again, I feel like my plan is that after I give birth, I can cut that waistband and then make it a thicker yoga waistband that comes up over my, you know, my bump, what's left of my bump at that point. And I think 
that it's not too low where it will look weird or like maternity pants. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be able to make it look nice. And then I'll still be able to wear all these pants, <laughs> which will be good because they're so comfy. That's my thought. All right. And now I just want to share a quick sneak peekish thing of the ideas I'm having for my videos for the rest of Vlogmas, or at least one section of my videos. Last month I started writing down topics for reflecting on the year in terms of what I've sewed um, that I want to cover in these videos. So I think that I'm going to start having a section of the videos, not every day, but probably every other day, where I share my reflections on the year, like what was my favorite pattern? I'm just looking at my thing. Um, what was my new skills that I learned or favorite tips that I learned? So that's coming up. All right, well, I hope you had a wonderful Vlogmas Day 3, um, a wonderful December day, and um, I will talk to you again soon. Bye.